Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian. And I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily vlogs I try to update you on the important real-life situations in Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture or whatever interests you. And today I have decided to pick a happier topic for my vlog and we are going to talk about Borscht because today Borscht has become an intangible cultural heritage protected by UNESCO. And this is a very important diplomatic step because at the beginning of this war, Russian propagandist Zaharova spoke about Borscht and used it to illustrate Nazi in Ukraine. She said that the fact that Ukrainians associate this dish particularly with their cuisine definitely demonstrates Ukrainian Nazism and extremism. So all of those of you who believe that pizza is an Italian dish and uh, let's say hamburger is a symbol of American cuisine, well, all of you are Nazis because you cannot qualify a particular dish to a particular culture. Uh, definitely, it is better to eat borscht or at least to cook borscht, but not to speak about borscht. And it might be pretty difficult for me, but uh, today it is really hot and I don't feel like cooking and demonstrating that. But if you ask me in uh, comments, I will be glad to provide you with some recipes or maybe later record a separate vlog where I cook, because I do cook. And but still, borscht is an extremely important concept, part of Ukrainian culture, so I do believe it is possible to speak about uh, it. Definitely, the history of uh, this recipe is really long and perhaps it's impossible to identify the moment where the first man or the first woman cooked the first bowl of borscht. But uh, first of all, we have to focus on the ingredients that make this soup-style dish uh, really uh, unique. And these are beetroots. Beetroots are very popular in Ukraine. We eat them in salads, we eat them in uh, um, other things. I don't know how to uh, name them. We, we add them to sauces. And also, uh, we um, definitely make uh, them. Uh, they are a central, essential part of any borscht. Cabbage, potatoes, beans, carrots, and all the other ingredients, they depend on your family traditions, on your region, on your personal likings. What is interesting, perhaps we can build a map of borscht in Ukraine and when you travel from region to region, you will be able to, do, to try and discover new tastes. So definitely beetroots and cabbages are vital ingredients, but all the other uh, can vary from region to region. For example, uh, in uh, Volin, that is close to the forest, we like adding mushrooms. And in the central and eastern Ukraine, they can add peppers or um, some people don't like adding potatoes into a soup and can boil them separately and then eat as a helping or instead of bread. Also, in some regions, people even add uh, cherries to make it more sour. And in general, we can say that there are different kinds of borscht, but number one is red borscht, the one I was talking about, the green borscht, and the lean borscht, which is cooked without any meat in it. And um, they are more popular during feast seasons when people keep the land. And also a cold borscht, which can be pretty helpful when the summer is getting really hot. And also, I know some of my friends told me that a very nice uh, test of uh, a pizzeria is to try margarita and if margarita pizza is tasty, then uh, the restaurant is okay. So something similar can be done with borscht. If you try borscht in the restaurant and you like that borscht, then perhaps the restaurant is really good. The way it is served also differ from uh, region to region, but um, we typically eat, that, eat it with sour cream and uh, with garlic and onion and uh, sometimes um, you can also get pampushki. Pampushki are specific buns, also uh, spread with um, minced garlic 
and they are made of white wheat flour and I personally like it but this is a more typical way to serve borscht in the restaurant or you can buy them in a supermarket not many uh, people bake this pampushkis for borscht in uh, their houses also being a very ordinary dish uh, borscht is definitely present on various holidays and uh, for example we have this a supper before Christmas when we don't eat meat and you will definitely encounter a lean borscht on the table. And some people believe that back in the pagan times borscht was also a part of various rituals and so on. Also it is a part of our literature, it is a part of uh, various uh, jokes and uh, so on. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, we are always uh, happy when other people borrow this recipe or definitely uh, cuisines like Polish, like Lithuanian, we are close to each other and uh, you cannot build borders uh, between the dishes but still I think that this fact that now borscht is a Ukrainian uh, cultural heritage is pretty important because Russians very often like to add it as a Russian borscht in menus all over the world and definitely it is not uh, the um, correct uh, representation of our intangible cultural heritage. Also I have to mention one interesting event that took place in 1953 when Stalin died and many uh, restaurants in uh, Ukrainian diaspora, in particular one restaurant in Washington, it seems to me it was named uh, 1203, they served free borscht to all the people just to celebrate the occasion of uh, Stalin's death. You can find posters with that and I think this is a very nice illustration of Ukrainian's attitude uh, to uh, life in uh, general. Uh, another interesting thing that I have to mention perhaps is that we honestly believe that the borscht becomes tastier uh, the next day after it is uh, prepared. So sometimes people can invite you for the yesterday's borscht, which actually means they want you to taste the better one. Because when it stands with all the ingredients inside, it definitely gets uh, tastier and um, of course uh, it is interesting just like uh, to compare what kind of borscht is you like. Also all around Ukraine we have various festivals of borscht, uh, you can travel from region to region discovering this regional uh, recipes and to tell you the truth if there are two signature dishes in Ukraine, vareniki and borscht, I'm definitely a borscht uh, person. So I hope that I have inspired you to Google more. Also, perhaps I will leave a link to one uh, YouTube channel of a very popular now Ukrainian chef, Yevhen Klopotenko, who was one of the people who encouraged this UNESCO decision and perhaps they wrote to UNESCO to um, fix borscht as the intangible cultural heritage of Ukraine. And he is a very popular uh, opinion leader in Ukraine and he works a lot with the changes of school menus also here together with the first lady of Ukraine Olena Zelenska and I think that we haven't met in our live sessions for a pretty long period of time so I'm happy to invite you this Sunday at the traditional time 28 p.m in Ukraine and I will leave the uh, countdown in my channel so I will be really happy to meet with you and to discuss the questions that you would like to ask me. Thank you for watching my videos, thank you for buying me coffee, thank you for subscriptions because they provide me with a better platform to share important news about Ukraine, our beautiful culture and those difficult things that we have to go through on the way to our victory and independence. Slava Ukraini!